So now we can finally use Rosetta through Linux on a virtual machine on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at one of the most overlooked announcements from WWDC, which is the fact that we can now use Rosetta 2 on Linux virtual machines on Apple Silicon hardware. And this is a big deal because Rosetta was previously only available to use on the macOS operating system, but it is now available to use on Linux virtual machines. And this could potentially blow open the door for Linux gaming on Apple Silicon hardware using the compatibility layer Proton, which is the technology that allows Windows x86 games to run so well on underpowered Linux hardware like the Steam Deck. And if we could get Rosetta 2 and Proton to work on Apple Silicon hardware, then this would open up the door for many more games to work on Apple Silicon Macs. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, we have to acknowledge there are still many barriers to getting Proton and Linux gaming working on the Mac. One of them is the fact that we only have access to Vertio GPU drivers, and so we can't get full graphics acceleration on Linux virtual machines. Secondly is the fact that Proton requires Steam, and Steam cannot be installed because on Linux this is still a 32-bit application and Rosetta only supports x86 64-bit applications. This is in contrast to Steam on Mac OS which is an Intel application which is 64-bit that runs through Rosetta. And despite these limitations there is still quite a lot of developer interest in getting Intel binaries to work with open source virtual machine software like UTM. And if Rosetta can be used on a virtual machine, then it could also be potentially used on Asahi Linux, which is native ARM Linux on the Apple Silicon Mac. However, the developer of Asahi Linux does query about whether using Rosetta is going to be legal outside of a virtual machine. So despite all of these limitations, I do think that using Rosetta on Linux is a very interesting proposition. And what I'd like to do today is to show you what progress has been made so far and to get people testing as much as possible so that we can expand the compatibility of games right running on Apple Silicon Max. So today I'm going to show you how to get Rosetta 2 working in a Linux virtual machine. And a lot of the hard work has already been done by a developer called Danny. And she has done the difficult job of passing through all of Apple's difficult documentation and creating a relatively easy to use virtual machine app, which I'm going to show you how to set up and install today. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please subscribe and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac news. So before we launch into this tutorial, I just want to warn you that I am not a Linux expert. I have very limited experience and I was guided a lot by Danny. The aim of this tutorial is to get Rosetta 2 on Linux in the hands of as many people as possible so that we can build on the knowledge, get other games and software working on the Apple Silicon Macs. So the first thing we're going to do is to go to this GitHub page, which I'll leave a link to in the description. And then what we're going to do is to scroll down and then we're going to click on this link for Ubuntu 22.04. And we're going to be using the server version. And that's because there is no desktop version for ARM64 CPUs. So we're going to be using the server version instead. So we're going to click this link and then we're going to download this ISO file. And then what we're going to do is to scroll back up and then we'll go to the releases section here and click on releases. And then we're going to download the latest version. So at the time of recording, it's 0.2. I'm going to scroll down here, open up the assets section and then download rosettavm.zip. So I'll click on here and then this is going to download into our downloads folder. So then we're going to go to finder and then we're going to find our Rosetta VM application here. And then we're going to double click on Rosetta VM. Then this is going to open up the virtual machine. And then what we're going to do is to select our Ubuntu 22.04 live server ISO. So this is the ARM64 version. I'm going to press open and then I'm going to double click on this bar to make it bigger. And in this section, we're going to be using keyboard arrows to navigate. And we're going to select the first option here, install Ubuntu server and run press return. So now it's going to go through the installation process. And now we're going to select our language. So here I'm going to select English. And here it's quite important to update to the new installer. That's going to fix a bug with the petition size allocation. Here we're going to press update to new installer. And now this is going to reconnect. And now we're going to continue the setup process. We're going to press done. Here we're going to press done again. Here we're going to select the standard Ubuntu server, click done, press done again, press done to skip the proxy setup, press done here. And here we are allocating a 64 gigabyte file to the virtual disk. Here we're going to scroll down and press done and press return. Here we're going to scroll all the way down and then press done. Press down and press continue. And now we're going to create our username and password. I'm going to call the server Rosetta. I'm going to give myself a username and a password as well well. Here I'm going to press done. Installing open SSH is optional, but I'm going to press done here and skip it. And now we're going to go through the next part, press done. 
and now it's starting the install process properly. So here you can see it's making progress as there are symbols which are showing installation is occurring. So the install is complete, now it's just saying curtain command imprompt is installing some security updates, just let that complete. So this installation process is basically completed, it's saying here we've got a kernel panic, what I'm going to do is to close the virtual machine, and if we can't close it like that, what we're going to do is go to force quit, and then close the virtual machine manually using force quit, and then basically we're going to open up Rosetta VM again, and it's going to load up into the virtual machine, that's been fully installed with Linux. So now I can easily log in with my username and also the password that I created. And now I'm into Ubuntu 22.04 and this is the Linux virtual machine running under macOS Ventura. So now that we're able to log into our account and we have the command prompt up, what we're going to do is to install the graphical user interface. So there are some commands on the actual GitHub page here. What we're going to do is to run these commands. So the first one is sudo apt update. So just type that in, press return and then type in your password. Then we're going to type in sudo apt dash y space full dash upgrade, press return. And once that's done, we're going to press the tab button and I'm going to press OK here. And then the last step here is sudo apt dash y install Ubuntu desktop with this circumflex here. So make sure to add that command, which is a shift six and press return. Here it's asking us whether we want to continue and install using additional space. We're going to press y and press return. And this part might take a bit of time. It's downloading the entire front end interface. You can track the progress on the bottom right here. It's telling us the speed of the download and how many seconds left. So once that's complete, we're going to press the tab button and press OK. And then we're going to type in sudo reboot and it's going to restart the virtual machine. And now this has booted into the graphical user interface. So now I can click on my user account and then I can type in my password. And now this is loaded up into a more familiar Ubuntu desktop. Here we're going to press next, next. Next and then done. So next thing I recommend doing is to install the software center so we can download additional software. So what I would go is click this button at the bottom left and either do a search for terminal or, or press the terminal button here. And here I'm going to maximize this. Then we're going to type in the command sudo apt install gnome dash software, press return, type in a password, press Y and then return. And then once that's installed, we can minimize this. Then we click on show applications. And if we do a search for software, then we can find the Ubuntu's equivalent of the app store. So I'm going to do a search for Firefox and then I can click install here, type in my password, and then this is gonna install for us. So once Firefox is installed, we can go ahead and open this, and now we can browse the web as normal. So what I do recommend doing is to open up the GitHub within Firefox within the virtual machine, and that's gonna make it much easier to enter the next commands, which we're gonna copy and paste into Terminal, and this is gonna allow access to Rosetta on the virtual machine. So what we're gonna do is to copy this command here, sudo apt install bin fmt support. So once we've copied the command, what I'm gonna do is to right click on the space and then press paste and then return and then we're going to execute the next command here we're going to copy this set of commands and then right click paste and press return and now Rosetta has been enabled. Just be aware that if you restart the virtual machine, you'll need to run this command again. So now that Rosetta 2 is enabled, if you want to install the next 8664-bit application, we also need to enable AMD64 libraries. And the way to do this is that we need to open up the sources.list file. So to navigate to this file, we're gonna click on the files icon here, and then I'm gonna click on home, and then I'm gonna click backspace, and then backspace again, and that's gonna take us to the root of the computer. Then we're gonna double click on etc, then double click on apt, and then we're gonna find sources.list. So now that we've located the file, what we need to do is also change the permissions as well so that we can actually edit it because this is read only at the moment. So now I'm gonna type in chmod777 and then type in the full path etc app to sources.list to press return. Then I'm gonna to go to files, and then if I right click on sources.list, go to properties and look at permissions, I'll see that I have read and write permissions now. So you're gonna right click and open with text editor or open with other applications and then view all applications and then double click text editor. Now I have the ability to press the save button on any additional lines that I add. So here at the bottom, what I'm gonna do is to look again at the GitHub page. Then we're gonna copy this box here, go back to the text editor. And then at the bottom of the page here, we're gonna right click and press paste. Now it's gonna enter all of these new lines here. I'm gonna press the save button. So now we need to add this line to enable AMD64 repositories. Go back to terminal, right click, press paste, press return. 
The final step here is we should type in sudo apt update and that's going to update the sources list. So now the sources list is updated. In order to install any AMD64 application and get it running through Rosetta, we need to append it with colon AMD64 and then that should install. So the main example of an app running through Rosetta on the Linux virtual machine is something called Xize, which I demonstrated at the beginning of this video and it's something that Danny demonstrated as well. And all you have to do is to type in sudo apt install x11-apps and append amd64 at the end of it. And then once that's installed, you'll be able to run the command xsize. And this is an x86 64-bit application running through Rosetta 2 on the Linux virtual machine. So one of the first things that people are going to try to do is to install Steam. So you use this command sudo apt install Steam devices. And unfortunately, what this will install is the 32-bit version of Steam. Because we're using an ARM64 CPU and Rosetta only supports the translation of 64-bit applications, then unfortunately, this is just not going to work at all. So I've also attempted to run some Linux binaries downloaded from GOG. And here, for example, I'm trying to run Factorio. So what I do is I unzip the file and then I try to run the star.sh within the folder structure. However, it seems to give me this error message. So if any other advanced Linux gaming users manage to figure this out, then please make sure to leave a comment. So anyway, this comes to the end of our tutorial. And so what I'd like to do is thank Danny very much for the hard work that she's put into this project and for sharing her findings with the rest of the community and also troubleshooting the issues that I had. Please make sure to check out her coffee page. I'm also going to leave links for her GitHub sponsor page where you can make a donation and support the work that she does. And also make sure to check out her YouTube channel as well. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.